Thank you very much, uh, Masaritz. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, on behalf of our director, uh, Dr. Aidika, I welcome you all to this uh, online course on urban agriculture. And this is the third batch of our online course on urban agriculture. And I understand that uh, there are participants from uh, Philippines, Malaysia, and Indonesia. And for our participants from Indonesia, I would like to say Salamat Hari Batik Nasional uh, for today. I hope you're all wearing your batik because this is also a very wonderful uh, tradition in Indonesia. Well, uh, Urban Agriculture, this online course has been offered uh, for since uh, last year as part of the Southeast Asia Creative Camp. And we are very happy that a lot of uh, schools are still uh, having the interest to join this course until now. And we hope that you can learn a lot from our resource persons. We hope that you will really find time to attend all the training courses because uh, we know that our resource persons are much, much willing to share their time to teach about concepts and technologies about uh, online course on urban agriculture. Um, with me, uh, my team, uh, Mas Haritz and also Mariana, has been working very hard to uh, implement, continuously implement this uh, online course. And for anything that you would like to ask from them, uh, ask about the course, please do not hesitate to contact them. So with this, before I go on with the orientation, I would like to officially open this third offering of our online course on urban agriculture. Thank you, Thank you Pajes. <laughs> okay, now should we move on to the next session? Could you please share your exit full screen? Okay, share my desktop. Yeah. Okay, so um, as uh, Mr. Harris said, we would like to give an on orientation about our online workshop. Uh, and this will be uh, the session for this afternoon because our first speaker on overview of the urban agriculture will not be around, but hopefully we can reschedule this one. So um, for this orientation, we would like you to be familiar with the rules on how we will conduct this uh, online course. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay, so as we, as we had now, you've been hearing me, we will be conducting the course using the English language uh, because uh, we have participants from other countries other than in Indonesia. And uh, please use group chat to discuss issues related to the workshop only. We would like you to avoid to share files, pictures, stickers, videos unrelated to the workshop so we will not be confusing each other while we are going on with the lectures and even throughout this uh, process of uh, chatting. Next slide. So for the username format to join our WebEx, we use school name uh, underscore first name or school name underscore name one plus name two plus name three. So, for example, it has to be the school name could be Biotrop underscore the name of the persons that will be joining the session. Like the example says Biotrop underscore Haritz plus Chaya, and you can add more uh, persons, whoever will be joining the session. I hope this is clear. Okay. So if students cannot join the WebEx meeting on schedule, you can view previous lectures from our video recording in the 
Sia Creative Camp website, and this is uh, uh, creativecamp.simio.org slash urban hyphen agriculture. So you can see that on your screen. So don't worry if you don't uh, attend the session, but you can always uh, get them and uh, review them on this site. But once again, we would like to encourage you to really attend the live session because it is much more exciting and much more interaction later on. You can learn from each other, from the questions that other participants will be asking in the process. Uh, so it will be very exciting with your participation. Next slide. Um, as far as the agenda or about the workshop, so we will be, uh, uh, this will be the, the, content. the content of the uh, PowerPoint that I'm giving right now. So I just give you part of it, uh, the overview or orientation, and then I would give you the profile of the participants. How do we now go through the process of the training and also the schedule so you will know when to be uh, uh, accessing us again. And of course, uh, in all the other online courses that we have uh, conducted, uh, the past two online courses, we always require participants to have outputs, uh, and we will tell you about that later on. Plus, uh, this is the exciting part. Uh, after you have conducted or produced your outputs, then we will be judging the best outputs and we will be giving you some rewards. And particularly for the, uh, for the participants or the schools that have completed the course, at least like 80% or 100% uh, 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 will be encouraged, then you will be receiving uh, certificates uh, from the work, from us. Next slide, please. So, uh, as a background, uh, we would like to see urban agriculture as a solution for uh, producing uh, vegetables and other food commodities in a limited area. So, uh, it is described as farming activities that are implemented in the urban environment which have usually limited area. So we know that in some uh, schools, you have limited areas, you don't have much uh, land to plant. So, but then again, there are some techniques that you can learn still to practice uh, urban agriculture. So you can still have farming, even though your area is limited uh, through intensive, efficient, and innovative ways of farming. And this is what you will be learning later on in the next few days from our resource persons. Uh, these technologies and solutions have been developed uh, to address this issue. And part of the curriculum will discuss about hydroponics, aquaponics, verticulture, or even some conventional ways of planting that could be done uh, depending on the condition that you have in your school or even in the communities around your school, and this could also include having a raised bed or just using pots or using your rooftop, if you have a very nice rooftop, that you can put your pots and even raised gardens. Next. So, uh, what do we plan to achieve in this uh, online course? Uh, for Biotrop and Simio in general, we would like to really enhance your awareness and understanding about the basic concepts of urban agriculture. I would suppose that you already, some of you might have been practicing some urban agriculture technologies, and uh, we would like to really see and level off this kind of knowledge and understanding through the discussions that we will be having. And um, we will also encourage you to share your experiences in the process while having this online session. The second objective is uh, to provide you with working knowledge on several urban agriculture technologies that could really be implemented in your schools or even around the communities uh, where you are. And uh, like I said, we would like to really uh, share practices and develop innovative projects uh, from all of you after 
catalyze projects uh, to implement your urban agriculture activities. So I'm happy to hear and to know, I mean, that there are now 73 teams participating and uh, composing of around 219 individuals. So, and um, we are very happy to know that there are participants from Indonesia, Philippines, and Malaysia. So, uh, well, the majority comes from Indonesia, but uh, we're happy to know that there are eight teams coming from the Philippines and also three teams coming from Malaysia. Okay, so um, there will be a sharing session for all the participants. This is not a one-way kind of training. So after the uh, resource persons have delivered a lecture, we invite you to really share your best practices on implementing urban agriculture. Like I said, some of you might have already been practicing urban agriculture, and we really encourage you to share these experiences in any of the sessions later on. This will be arranged. Uh, our coordinators, uh, Mr. Haritz and uh, Ms. Rihanna, would be consulting some of you and asking whether who among you will be uh, willing to share your experiences uh, during the session. And uh, please contact them through uh, Haritz at biotrop.org or Rihanna at biotrop.org or maybe later on uh, through handphone, a mobile phone, uh, they will give their numbers to you later on. Next. So uh, this will be the training process. So we have almost like three weeks of training session from October 2 to October 25. And then uh, as we end the session on October 25, there will be an orientation on the details of the assignment that you have to produce. Uh, after that, uh, we will be giving you about like one week or more than uh, less than two weeks to really submit your assignment. Uh, that will be on, on November 2. And uh, by truck and some of us, uh, the resource persons, will be evaluating your uh, project proposals and we will be announcing the finalists uh, soon. And the finalists to be selected will be making presentations on 15 to 16 November, depending on the uh, number of uh, shortlisted. So maybe if there are uh, uh, 73 teams, uh, we normally uh, select about 10 finalists. Or if we see really good project proposals, we may extend it to about like 12 finalists uh, because we would like to give uh, as much opportunities for schools that can come up with good project proposals. And then uh, by November 21, uh, we will be announcing the winners uh, for this uh, project assignments. Uh, those who have uh, who have gathered the most number of scores depending on the uh, criteria that we will be telling you soon. Okay, so um, this is uh, the breakdown of the uh, training session. So from October 2 to October 25, and if you notice it, uh, the sessions will be held every Tuesday and Thursday uh, throughout this period. So we have eight sessions, and uh, we will start with uh, the introduction to the concept and principles of urban agriculture. And um, no less than our director, Dr. Edika Mansur, will give this lecture. Hopefully, he can come back. Uh, he's already uh, on the way towards this week because he's now in uh, Manado. Okay. The next session on October 4 will be solid organic waste management and composting. We are fortunate to have once again Professor Arik Santo Yuwono from IPB to be our lecturer. Uh, despite his hectic schedule, 
is willing to share his expertise on this topic okay and maybe this is also one uh, topic that you will be much more interested to know about and this is about hydroponic techniques and practices that would be scheduled on October 9 Tuesday and we are very happy also to have one of participants during the first um, online course, Ms. Dwi from uh, SMP Saim in Surabaya and also Ms. Aprilia from the Vocational School Nitra Industry MM2100 to be our resource persons. I would like to emphasize that these teachers have been practicing hydroponics production in their respective schools very well and they can share a lot of experience on this topic uh, during the scheduled time on October 9th. On October 11, uh, that will be a Thursday, uh, we will have Dr. Awang Hari Jaya, also from the uh, University of Agricultural Bogor University, and he's also one of our affiliate scientists, and he will be discussing about soil-based vegetable and fruit tree gardening. In fact, uh, Dr. Awang is one of our experts from uh, in our ongoing fruit production project involving 30 vocational agricultural schools in 15 provinces in Indonesia. So I believe he can really share a lot of interesting ideas on this topic on soil-based vegetable and fruit tree production or gardening. In fact, Dr. Awang is also the head of the uh, Horticultural Research Center of IPB and he can is really doing a lot of experiments on indigenous vegetable production uh, for Indonesians, you are aware of, we normally eat lalapan during lunchtime or during meal. So this is uh, Dr. Uh, Awang is interested about. For the topic on aquaculture or aquaponics and including algae farming uh, or what you call lumut in uh, Basa, Indonesia or Malay or even in the Philippines, we call it also lumut, the algae. Uh, this will be uh, given on Tuesday, October 16, and we are very happy to have our uh, students and teachers from Muntin Lupa National High School to give this lecture. Muntin Lupa National High School was our first prize winner uh, for their project on RJ farming. And, and I think uh, this is an interesting topic that you can learn from them and see how they can really grow algae or aquaponic and really uh, coming up, I mean, generating income for their schools. And uh, income is used to subsidize some of the students uh, in the school, uh, students coming from poor families. So this will be an interesting topic. On 18 October, on Thursday, this will be the sixth session, we will have a topic on oyster mushroom production. And our uh, staff, uh, Mr. Samsu uh, Yani, will be our lecturer for this topic. Uh, Mr. Samsu is heading our product development and services department, and one of which is the uh, oyster mushroom production. For the seventh session, and this will be on Tuesday, October 23, uh, we will have Professor Hadi Susilo Arifin from the Institute Pertanian Bogor, uh, and also some uh, teachers and students from the vocational, agricultural vocational school uh, number 63 in Jakarta, share the experiences on agri-based enterprise development and implementation. So SMK Negri uh, 63 Jakarta has been doing a lot of enterprise uh, activities 
through their urban agriculture uh, projects. In fact, they also won the first place, the first prize, during the second online training course on urban agriculture with their biopot uh, product. So they use uh, banana barks to make pots for planting. So this could be interesting for you to listen to their experience. Yes. So the last session, which is on Tuesday, uh, October 25, um, I will be giving some tips on how to document and report your best practices in urban agriculture. Um, this is very important. So uh, you have something to share with other schools and communities because you already documented your best practice. So I will just be discussing how you will try to really record your activities and so you can share it with people outside your school or even to other students who are not attending this session. So this will be our schedule, uh, eight sessions from, from October 2 to October 25. Okay, so I'll move on to giving the assignments. Uh, okay, so it's not really just attending the sessions and learning about the different topics, but what is important is after attending the session, you will be able to develop a proposal on implementing an urban agriculture project or an improvement on your current urban agricultural technologies or practices that promote If your school has not really started practicing urban agriculture, then you need to conceptualize what kind of projects that you will be introducing to the school for you to have your urban agricultural activity. But for those schools who have already their ongoing agricultural practices, we would like you to see uh, where are the gaps, are there still problems, how much you can improve so you can come up with a proposal of uh, improving your agricultural, urban agricultural practices uh, that you are currently doing right now. So how do we now assess your proposals? Uh, the proposals will be evaluated according to the following criteria. One, we will evaluate it in terms of creativity. Second, innovation. Third, efficiency. The fourth, feasibility. The fifth, sustainability. And the last, impacts to the students or to the school in general. So how do we, uh, this, this criteria has different percentage uh, that we will explain to you later on as we move on to the assignment, you know. So for, for this criteria, next, uh, well, uh, like I said, we will uh, give you the percentage later on. But for these assignments, um, uh, we will be giving you the template of how you will make your proposal on October 25. And then um, a team has about one week to develop the action plan. As I have mentioned earlier in the process, we will be uh, giving you from October 25 to November 2 to really brainstorm with each other and write the proposal and package it uh, to become one whole proposal that you will submit by November 2. Okay? And uh, only uh, the shortlisted teams or the teams that have really uh, acquired highest scores from the juries will be invited to have an online presentation, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, you, the finalists will be invited to present the project proposals and they will be judged again according to the criteria that I have mentioned earlier. Yeah. So, 
and uh, what awaits the best uh, project proposal. So we will be giving about seven seven million rupiah for the winning team for the first prize or an equivalent of four hundred sixty three dollars, uh, depending on exchange rate. <laughs> uh, but this is the far price for the first prize uh, for the school that will be uh, judged as the best proposal. The second prize we will be giving the winning team six million rupiah or an equivalent of three hundred ninety seven US dollars. And for the third, uh, the winning team will receive five thousand rupiah, uh, five million rupiah, or an equivalent of three hundred thirty US dollars. And um, we learned from this uh, senior secretariat, uh, our partner for this uh, course under the Southeast Asia Creative Creative, uh, Creative Camp that. Winning teams will be invited to exhibit their products during the Senior Council Conference in March or April in 2019. And usually, the Senior Council Conference is held in Bangkok, Thailand. So, all the winning teams will be uh, having the chance to go to Thailand uh, to attend and exhibit your winning products in this conference. Other than this, we will be uh, giving certificates of recognition to all the uh, competition winners or the winning uh, schools. And we will also be giving certificates of completion to all participants who have submitted the final assignment. Uh, so please uh, be reminded that only participants or the school teams that have submitted the final assignments would receive certificates of completion. So this would mean that those who will not submit may not be able to receive the certificate. So we really encourage you to find time during the uh, one or two weeks that we'll be giving you to uh, develop the proposal to really work together and come up with this proposal and submit to us. And of course, uh, we will also be recognizing our instructors and invited speakers. So we will be giving them certificates of appreciation. Should we also give the participant who participated in the service session part? Yes. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, there will be uh, sharing sessions for participants. And that's why we really encourage you to uh, volunteer to share your experiences because we will also be giving certificates of appreciation to, for those who will be sharing the experiences during any of the online sessions. And this is also a very uh, a good privilege and exposure to some of you, especially the students, to practice your English and at the same time to practice your presentation skills. So. I think this is all for now. Uh, thank you uh, for your attention. If there are some questions and things that are not clear, I think we can open up the session uh, and uh, Mr. Harit would moderate this uh, session. So we will be here to answer your question. Okay, thank you. Yes, so for those of you who have questions, you can directly chat to everyone or you can unmute yourself and ask the question directly. Okay, so for the first question we have from SMA Satu Gratiba. Excuse me, we want to ask for whom is the impact are expected? For just the student or for all of the people? Okay, yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, the project that you will develop will be expected to benefit both your students, your schools in general, or even the community around the school, if, especially if your schools have activities to reach out to communities around your area. So when you talk about your project to develop, try to think about your students, try to think about the whole school, 
and try to think about the communities around you because it is important also that the projects that you can develop can be applied and benefit more people than just your school. Okay, thank you. Yes, it seems like we have over 54 participants wow. who would like to join our session. So, once again, if anyone has some question for regarding these programs, you can chat in the chat box or directly unmute yourself so you can ask the question directly. And just a reminder for the next session, it is better to use the format that we provided you earlier. So use your school name, underscore, your first name, and then your first name or etc. So it will be easier for us to identify which institution you come from. Yeah. Okay, okay it's from SMA Satu Yeah. Is it permitted that we combine two or more ideas in our project? Okay, uh, this is a very good question. Can we combine two or more technologies in our project? Sure, you can. Uh, this is really about creativity. But we would like it to be creativity and innovativeness. If you can combine uh, several technologies in your project. But what I would like to remind is fully technologies that you will be combining in your project would really be very integrated. Uh, and so it will be easy to manage when you're already implementing that. So, like for example, you can have compost making and also um, soil-based gardening, it's okay. Or compost making with um, organic uh, hydro, it's okay. So it depends on your creativity and your innovativeness to come up with these kinds of projects. Yeah? Okay, we hope that... Yeah, agriculture. Okay. Yeah, like we said, um, a combination uh, of technologies will be good, especially if it is manageable and can produce a lot of benefits for your students, for your school, for the communities. Uh, the urban agriculture technologies that uh, you would have to develop uh, would not just be to produce material, uh, to produce the uh, but you can also look into the function of this technology that will be used for teaching in your schools. And so you can also improve the uh, literacy and nutrition and entrepreneurship of your students through the project that you will develop. Uh, that's why it is very important to make it clear in your proposal about the objectives of your project because you will be evaluated according to that. The relevant uh, the relevance of your project and the innovativeness, creativity, sustainability, and also impacts to your students, to your school, and even to the communities around your school. Yeah, okay, I think thank you. Yeah. Okay, we have. Accept from SMK Satu Bandung, from Malang. Is there any participant who, who is from outside of Indonesia, from Philippines or from Malaysia? Mm -hmm. I think the names are all Indonesian. Anyone from Malaysia now um, joining the session or from the Philippines? Anything you would like to clarify? Is it clear? Okay, 
There is a question from Mandua Kudus, Pak. Mm-hmm. Can we take faculty culture techniques in the project later? Oh, okay. So, yes, um, you can have verticulture as one of your project. Um, but if you notice it in our in our uh, schedule, we really don't have a topic on verticulture techniques. But does this will not stop you to venture on verticulture technique because this is also one technique for urban agriculture. So we will really, uh, if you have this kind of experience, then maybe later on you can share during any of the sessions uh, because uh, this is not covered in our topic uh, online course. But verticulture technique, we offer this in our school garden training course. This is the face-to-face training course that we have. And there's a lecturer, Professor Hadi Susilo, also lecturing on verticulture technique. Maybe we can add this one later on. Okay, thank you, Pa. So, just to <laughs> clarify things, for those of you who have, who have uh, practices some urban agriculture technologies that was not covered in the sessions, you can directly contact me or Mariana and we will try to fit in your uh, sharing session into the nearest technology yeah. available in the sessions. Yeah. Usually, uh, verticulture technique, vertigation, uh, hydroponic, they can go together because this is uh, um, same, almost same concept of like minim- minimize use of uh, soil in that matter because of the limited uh, space. But verticulture technique definitely uses uh, soil, uh, but uh, vertigation, the drip irrigation, and things like that, uh, you can share that during the hydroponic session, I believe so, or soil-based uh, uh, session. Okay, thank you. So for everyone, please, if you can join the sharing session because it is a good opportunity for your students to, yeah, just like what Pajas already said, to practice your presentation and your English speaking skill, etc. Okay, so any more questions from the participants? And we also have Saim, I think, oh, joining okay. us again. In this. Maybe uh, in the we will really uh, encourage you to give your feedback on our uh, training design, so we can well uh, whether we will need to enlarge our session topics or not. But for the, for the meantime, for this offering, as I have discussed earlier. This will be the topics that we will be uh, including. Uh, in fact, uh, there are other topics that we can include under urban agriculture, but most of the topics that we will be discussing here are based on the technologies that we already have here. In so because it will be better to share technologies that we already been practicing for a long, long time. And also, uh, for the other speakers from schools, we believe that they have already been practicing technologies that will be shared in these online courses, like from uh, Saim on uh, uh, hydroponics and also SMK 2000, uh, 2100, because they've really been producing hydroponics for a long, long time, and they have really... Um, uh, introduce some innovations in the way they practice hydroponics. Uh, for other sessions, uh, I think uh, for Montinlupa National High School, uh, they have been practicing aquaculture for a long, long time. And also the new technology that they have introduced on micropropagation of algae, who, which won them the first place uh, in the first offering, is really very promising. 
And I think this is something that we would like also other schools to look into so you can have additional new things that you can do in your respective schools. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, I hope uh, everything is clear for this orientation session. Like I said, uh, for any other questions that you would like to clarify or uh, concerns that you would like to clarify about our online course, please do not hesitate to contact Mr. Harris or Ms. Rihanna, uh, as I have lost earlier on the email addresses. And uh, later on, we will be, uh, they will be giving you uh, the uh, mobile phone. In fact, I think we will be creating a, a WhatsApp group for all the teachers of the teams here. So we will course through all, all communications to the teachers of the respective teams that are participating in this uh, online course. Okay. Uh, there's a question here from SM. SMA, uh, second from Padalarang. Uh, how long the time the how long the compost can be used to the agriculture? Uh, I'm not really sh clear about the question. If you mean like, how long can you produce a compost that you can use for your gardening? If this is a, a question, uh, compost making depends on the kinds of technology that you will be using. Yeah, so uh, some compost making technology uses um, uh, the uh, formulation to speed up the composting process. Some, they just leave it as it is. Uh, some, they use animal manure. Some, they do the turning over technique some they just have to have like enclosed uh, technique so it depends on the kind of compost technology that you will be using so you can already use the product later on in this course um, what professor arif will teach you is a household level or school-based level compost making which is very simple and it usually takes about like three months yeah, or two to three months to uh, produce the compost that will be ready for use in your uh, farming activities. I hope uh, this I, I uh, answered your question correctly. Thank you. So, any more questions from the audience? And okay, we have one more question. Good. Okay, hello, bro. Jadi, so what is your question? What is your question? As in, can bro, Jadi? Hello, how the effect of agriculture for the future in Indonesia? Oh. Oh. Wow, what is the impact of urban agriculture in Indonesia? That's a very good question. Uh, you know, uh, now, not only in Indonesia, in Southeast Asia, land area for farming is decreasing. And this is why urban agriculture techniques will be very uh, important to sustain production. Even in small areas, you can produce vegetables and other food commodities that could sustain the needs of your family, 
or the community. There are now a lot of young people who have ventured on urban agriculture on medium scale or even large scale uh, production, uh, especially on hydroponics, aquaponics, or even mushroom production. And this is helping a lot uh, countries so because uh, they can increase the availability of vegetables and other food products in the market and having uh, urban agriculture as an individual enterprise would also sustain the uh, needs of families you don't have to because there are other people who are unemployed who are not working and people who are doing urban agriculture on medium scale or so definitely it will have an impact on the economic status uh, whether at the community level but if you sum up and total all the benefits at the community level it will also bring up and to the national level later on. And at the same time, urban agriculture can have impact on the social conditions of people other than economic. Because for families or schools that practice urban agriculture, if they can produce vegetables, they can use that for feeding uh, or providing food to their students. So to improve the nutritional status, and so the students can be much more alert and smart while studying. Because in Indonesia or in other countries in Southeast Asia, there are thousands of students that go to school without eating breakfast or without eating lunch. But if the school has urban agriculture projects, then teachers can initiate feeding program. In fact, we have a lot of teachers who attended our online course and school garden training course that have initiated feeding programs. Um, in Indonesia, uh, they call it uh, masak bersama atau makan bersama, makan sarapan pagi bersama. So, the food that they produce are from the gardens in the school. So this can be impact that you can create if you have urban agriculture in your school. I hope I answered your question right. Hello? Uh, can we send more than one project? Oh, yeah. Okay, we hope that already answered the question from Mr. Tantor Jadid. And we have one more question from Andua Kudus. Can we send more than one project? Okay, yes. I think uh, you can send one, more than one project per team or per school. Yeah? School, yeah. yeah, per school. So I'm not really sure, like for example, uh, we can have more than one team per school and so depending on the number of teams per school then that would be the number of projects to be submitted per school so if your school you form five teams then each team can submit one project proposal each so it means there are five proposals coming from one school so one project per team. Yeah, one project per team. Okay, thank you. Okay, so for everyone who misses our procession, you can always check the website in here in the Creative Camp website, .org, and you can find the Urban Agriculture Workshop details there. The materials, video recording, etc. will be uploaded to this 
link later on. Okay, so on on my part, uh, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to have given this orientation on the third uh, offering of our online course on urban agriculture. I hope to see you again during the last session for my lecture on documentation and reporting of best practice on urban agriculture. I wish you all the best and I hope you can really enjoy and learn a lot from our online course. Thank you very much for your presence and your attention.